What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2024 Hyundai Kona SEL. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four, and down below is an IVT. Now, I'm super excited to be driving this Hyundai Kona because it is all new for 2024. This is the first major redo that Hyundai has ever done to the Kona name. This is what the older Konas looked like, and so it has not only grown in size, but it has added features. They've modernized it a lot, and I'm excited to get into it with you today. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle and have it reviewed here on on the channel, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that two liter inline four under the hood, making 147 horsepower. Now, there are a lot of drivetrains offered here in this generation of Kona. Some are available right now. Some will become available very soon. By the time you're watching this video, it might already be available. But the two gasoline engines that are offered are a two liter inline four, which is this engine or a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four that makes around 190 horsepower. So if you do want more power out of the Kona, you can absolutely do that. Just keep in mind that it will be a turbocharged engine and will require more maintenance to stay up to date. Now there also will be a hybrid Kona available and an electric Kona available down the road, but to my knowledge, they haven't hit dealers quite yet. And I most certainly haven't driven one yet, so I can't really give my input on those. But this 2.0 liter inline line four is wonderful. It gets really good fuel economy for what it is. The Hyundai Elantra also shares an engine with this vehicle and I liked it in that. So I like it in this as well. Like I said, paired to it is an IVT, which is basically a CVT, continuous variable transmission, intelligent variable transmission. It's fine in this application. I don't really mind it too much. Hyundai and Kia have used IVTs for a while and I think that they do okay. Last but not least, this particular Kona is all wheel drive. However, you can still find front wheel drive Konas if you'd like, they get a little bit better fuel economy, but living here in the Midwest, all wheel drive is the way to go. So how does it feel to drive the Hyundai Kona? Well, Hyundai has never really had a emphasis on driving feel. And so when you drive the Kona, it drives like an appliance. It's not a bad thing. It's just not an overly good thing. I really love when a car handles and drives really well, and you just don't get that out of the Kona. But for point A to point B, getting to work, getting to school, shuttling friends, kids, or relatives around, it's perfectly fine for those applications, and I quite enjoy it for that. It's very simple to use. There's no weird gimmicks besides the shifter, which we'll talk about in a second. But once you're in gear, it drives like every other car, and I can really appreciate that. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster. I really, really like the look of this. This really helps emphasize the new Kona design. It doesn't feel like they just cherry picked and carried a bunch of stuff over from the last gen. This feels special and I enjoy it. We could also customize it a little bit. And when we put it into sport, the red and white checkers found at the apexes of corners on racetracks shows up around the gauges. I love this. I love that little fanfare. I like that little attention to detail and it makes me feel special. You can also switch the gauge cluster between simple and classic. Simple is going to be a lot more minimalist. Classic is going to mimic older style gauges, which is kind of interesting. It's really nice that you get that sort of customization. On the steering wheel on the left, we have our adaptive cruise control options. I say it with emphasis because the Elantra is on the other side of the steering wheel. And off to the right, we have our mode, voice commands, phone options, favorite, volume, things like that that. The overall steering wheel is nice. It does share a lot with the Ionic vehicles, especially this no logo four dot badge in the center. I find that very interesting. Now we do have the shifter around the back of the steering wheel, and this is really the only like truly odd part of this interior that might take some getting used to. You twist it down for reverse, you twist it up for drive, but we're just not really used to seeing column shifters on little cars anymore. Back in the day, totally normal, totally run of the mill. But here in 2024, it's not really the case. And so it might take a second to figure out how to shift the car. But once you do, it's easy peasy, neoteric easy. 
Off to the left, we just have some blank material. And down below, we have our gauge dimmer switch, traction control off, hill descent control, and power parking brake. Moving out of the door, we have a lot of empty space around the grab handle, but we do have power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Again, this design feels very fresh and modern. Just the way that the window buttons are laid out and designed, really, really love to see that. Moving into the center, we do have our infotainment system. I love how it sort of blends into the gauge cluster. Makes it look like it's all one big screen, but it's not. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And this is a new system I have not personally used from Hyundai before. So it seems as though they've updated their infotainment system for 2024, and I think it's laid out really nice. I like this sort of subtle design in the background. I like all the icons or this popping colors that make it very easy to identify, but also sort of a minimalist design. And I really, really like all of this. I think Hyundai has done a swell job in designing this. However, I'm starting to get worried. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is why we do the job. They have added new sounds of nature for the Hyundai Kona. I don't know why I get so excited about this, but they keep adding different sounds of nature. They implemented this years ago. Take a listen to a couple of the new sounds of nature. This is a big deal for me. I, I don't know why, but it's very exciting. the backup camera pretty good up to snuff with other vehicles and i like it a lot down below that we get two climate control vents and we get these physical buttons for the infotainment system i absolutely love that hyundai is sticking with these physical buttons they do it also in the elantra and i love that then we do have our climate controls of course dual zone climate again really mimicking the ionic cars with these sort of squared off buttons and i enjoy the look of it then down below we have two usb c Really love that they've stuck with the modern USB-C, as well as a 12-volt outlet, which kind of opens up in a cool way. You push it and it flips open. Very, very fun there. Wireless charger down below. And then we get a little cluster here for the heated seats, auto holding brake, drive mode select, and parking camera. So heated seat, self-explanatory, auto holding brake. When you come to a stop, you press the brake a little extra hard and the vehicle will stay stationary until you hit the gas again. Wonderful for drive-throughs or red lights. Drive mode, like I said, we have three different drive modes for sport, normal, and snow. There's no smart mode here in the Kona. And then we have the parking camera button. You hit this button at slow speeds or when parked and you can turn on the camera at will then we have a center area now this is going to be a little spot of contention because we will do a big friggin model test this is where the cup holders are found and unfortunately it's the worst of both worlds when i open up the cup holders they're too small and when i close the cup holders the area is too large and so the Hyundai Kona SEL fails the big friggin' bottle test, which is to be expected, but I had a little bit of hope. <laughs> then we get a very tiny center console along with some storage space, and we'll talk about the seats. Now the seats are cloth, the SEL is still below the limited, so still cloth seats here, although they are heated, power, and comfortable enough. My time driving the car, I haven't felt any weird cricks in my neck or painful twists down my spine. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2024 Hyundai Kona SEL and... A couple of things to note. First of all, the interior space has been seriously upgraded from the outgoing Kona. The outgoing Kona, I could barely sit in the back seat at all. Now I have plenty of space to spread out. My head isn't hitting the ceiling and my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me. In that regard, it's a pleasurable experience. Where it's not a pleasurable experience is the actual material that they built these out of. I have to imagine that they poured some sort of concrete into these before they shipped them out they are very stiff 
very unforgiving. Maybe after years of kids getting in and out of the back, car seats, pets, things like that, maybe they'll loosen up a little bit. But hey, these things could use a little shot after dinner just to feel something nice. I mean, these are hard seats. Other than that, we do have a bright LED light back here. Two climate control vents. A lot of vehicles in this segment do not give rear climate vents to the passengers in the back. Very nice to see that. And two USB-C chargers. So anyone back here is going to be able to charge their devices. Their butt just might hurt while doing so. Let's hop out into the very back. We'll talk about the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Hyundai Kona. And something I just noticed, I've always thought that these Hyundai keys are weird. It's the Hyundai badge. Never put that together. Never, ever realized that. Anyway, once we are back here, pop this up like that. And we do have a Hyundai cargo net that we can put in, some tools and such like that. Nice rubberized floor mat, it says Kona, pull this up, and we do get a spare tire. That's not to be said about all new cars, so love to see that. Other than that, not any crazy space back here. I do get a little light, which is very nice to see, privacy cover and whatnot. So overall cargo space, not crazy, but still pretty nice to see in the back of the Kona. No power tailgate here on the SEL convenience, so regular tailgate it is. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and well, if you have the gift of sight, this car is bright. This is finished in Neoteric Yellow, which is quite the loud color. However, I don't actually hate it. A lot of people think that I don't like yellow cars because I didn't like the Toyota Corolla Cross, but that was like an acidic throw up -y yellow. This is actually like a highlighter. And so if you want a bright car that isn't the normal gray, silver, black, maybe dark blue that 99% of cars are, this is a wonderful color to go with. And I actually quite like it. I, I, I really, really do. Overall though, I think the redesign of the Kona is wonderful as well. I think the front end looks really futuristic. I think it looks really good. And overall, I'm just very, very happy with the overall redesign of the Hyundai Kona SEL. With all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the new Kona? Well, this car was not provided to me from Hyundai as a lot of cars are here on the channel. And I'm very thankful for that relationship. And so because of that, I'm under no regard or stress to say anything positive or anything negative about this Kona. However, I truly do feel that this car is very good. It does everything it set out to do very, very well. It's comfortable enough. It drives fine enough. It has great technology in here. And the biggest thing to me is that it feels fresh and modern. I wasn't sure it was going to because a lot of car makers will be like, hey, here's the new car. And then it's this same car that they've been making. Well, Hyundai really made a point to say, no, this is something new. This isn't the Kona that you're used to. And I'm very thankful that they did that. The other thing is that I get to experience a little bit of told you so. Here. The owner of this Kona, Carl, recently bought this because he traded in his Chevy Trax. I reviewed that Chevy Trax here on the channel. You could tell he has a theme of what kind of vehicle paint colors he likes. And I said in that video that I wouldn't recommend purchasing it because I'm not sure about long-term reliability. And at the time, it was unknown. Carl and only done a couple miles in that car. However, unfortunately, as time went on, more and more problems developed. The window motors went out. The backup camera would randomly not work and then work and then not work in the same drive. The tire pressure sensors would tell you anything but the truth. And worst of all, the air conditioning went out at just over 1,000 miles. And through all of this, Chevy was reluctant to actually do anything to help. So Carl turned in that bucket of trash and bought this, the Hyundai Kona. It's a similar size, similar drivetrain, similar color, and fills a similar need. And as long as we're talking about yellow cars, here's a yellow car for you in front of a yellow house, mind you. All things yellow here, I guess, today. Carl hasn't had any issues with this car. And I know that's setting the bar low at only 200 miles of ownership. But from what he's coming from, this is an enormous step up. Hyundais are just built better than a lot of the American cars that we get, especially the Chevy Trax. That's really the glory of the Kona as well, is that there is no flair to it. Yes, the color is loud, but 
as a vehicle, if you bought this in black, silver, or gray, there's no flare, there's no pain in the neck of when you try to figure out a new issue because there aren't really any. This car just works. It just works. And at this day and age, at this price point, that's all you can really ask for. I'm a big fan of the Hyundai Kona. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carl for letting me take out not only his Hyundai Kona, he has provided me with so many vehicles over the years. Really wonderful down to earth guy. I really appreciate always working with him and I'm sure I'm gonna work with him again in the future. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys. Thank you.